My name is Daniel Smith and this is part of the continuing forfeiture fighter series of videos that's being sponsored by San Diego Defenders. Today we'll be talking about just generally about why all these forfeitures are happening. Why is the government taking so much money? And by the government I mean the United States government. Currently the United States government is taking 2.7 billion dollars per year in forfeitures in assets and properties of people of foreign nations and of United States citizens as well. Now, what's causing all of that? Well, part of the reason I theorize is that there is a $15,000, excuse me, 15,000 peso per month deposit tax that is levied upon Mexican citizens or citizens that have peso accounts in Mexico. So what does that mean? If you deposit 15,000 pesos per month, you are taxed 3%. 15,000 pesos is about $1,400, $1,480 at the rate of 13 pesos uh, per dollar as an exchange rate. So what is this causing um, to happen? Well, many people are storing their money or stuffing it in their mattresses in order to avoid the 3% tax. Nobody likes taxes. Nobody likes taxes that are hard to explain. Why should you be penalized for depositing pesos or, or currency in a bank? And that's part of the problem. So you get these good citizens of Mexico that are stashing their money and will invariably come across the United States border and I have a my, my diagram as crude as it may be here's the United States border driving across the border with um, their cars and they might be coming across and is simply coming across the border and talking to a, an agent a, a US Customs agent and they might declare well I have nine thousand dollars in US currency that I'm bringing across the border. Well, the unfortunately, the what's happening is the United States government and the US Customs is taking a lot of that money. Um, it's sometimes called confiscacion or confiscation of money. And the Mexican citizens generally don't know what to do when their money is taken from them. Uh, the Napoleonic Code of Mexico is much different than the common law code, if you will, or, or systems of law in the United States. So they're presumed, if you will, guilty in Mexico, while in the United States you've got presumed innocence. Okay, so they're much different systems. So what happens? Um, it, it can be, uh, I hate to generalize, but it could be Jim and Maria Sanchez that are driving across the uh, border from Mexico into the United States and they simply drive, talk to the customs agent, the agent looks around the car, or maybe they have a, a drug sniffing or narcotic sniffing dog that is also, by the way, trained to um, detect cash. So let's say that the car comes across and lo and behold, back in the engine compartment is a compartment carrying currency. Here you go, there's a $100 or several hundred dollars um, up to $9,000. You don't have to declare, as we all know, anything under $10,000. So the United States government takes this cash. They say, well, we're going to keep this in the United States and you can go on driving. Although they do have a theory that says that the conveyance or the vehicle that brings the cash across the United, into the United States may be seized as well. But we'll talk about that in, in another video. Right now we're talking about the cash that was seized at the border and is now being held in Mex excuse me in the uh, U.S. Customs um, holding um, room, if you will, uh, for evidence. Okay, so what happens after that? Everybody feels kind of helpless, if you will. Um, they've driven across to the United States. They've got the money. Um, they want to buy things. Let's say that they own a restaurant and they want to purchase, uh, it can be anything, um, food items, are, uh, very common, um, eggs, any kind of perishables, milk, 
all these sorts of things that they might use in their restaurant. Let's say they're operating a restaurant here in Mexico and they're purchasing quite a few items. Now remember, Tijuana is the uh, most heavily crossed international border in the world. 25 million, over 25 million people per year cross the United States border at Tijuana, it's at San Ysidro. It's called the Port of Entry at San Ysidro. Okay, so we're getting back to the money. What can be done? Many Mexican um, citizens feel helpless. What, their, their money's gone, the United States government has it. Uh, they're automatically assumed to be drug dealers or somehow have generated this money illicitly um, and through illegal um, means. The bottom line is that's not the case. In, in many, many circumstances, there may be a wife that has no idea that uh, her husband may be, may be smuggling something that's illegal. That's called the innocent owner defense. There may be a situation where, of course, the money is being earned quite legally in Mexico and is being used, you know, is being held at the restaurant, stuffed into the mattresses so they can come across into the United States and buy the perishables. So what happens? Well, about 30 days later, it's quite common that they'll receive something that looks a lot like this. And you'll see that this is the Election of Proceedings Form AF, okay, sometimes known as the Notice of Forfeiture and Seizure. But at this particular form is called the Election of Proceedings Form AF in the post. And it states quite clearly at the top, Read the attached notice of seizure and information for claimants before you fill out this form. This form must be completed and returned with your petition or offer. Th that those words are underlined. If you do not complete and return this form, we shall proceed to forfeit the property administratively regardless of whether you file a petition or an offer. Okay, or a petition of offer. So your money will be gone. It will be given to the United States, taken by the United States, confiscated by the United States. So what do you do? Well, there are the series of the elections of proceedings. You can proceed by the petition for remission mitigation. Uh, you can make an offer and compromise, or you can file a claim with the United States court in order to get your money back. Something that's very, very important and something that you need to know more about it, and you need to know that you have rights to get your money back okay the next form that you may see is the customs bond that will be necessary in cases involving conveyances or, or cars and not necessarily with cash and this will have to be filled out and then of course there's a list of what they have taken um, from you at the border at the time um, that they stop so those are the three forms that you will be seeing if your items are confiscated at the border, okay? So, what do you do? Well, you need to understand a little bit about what's going on with the laws. It sounds very confusing and they cite quite a few code sections about what is um, available, what they can do, and what they can take um, administratively. And when you really look down at the at these the, the Code of Federal Regulations and the United States Code, you'll see that it says that they can take money that they believe um, that they can show that there's probable cause that the money was generated through illicit purposes or illicit, illicit means such as drug dealing, um, or that it was used that a, a conveyance such as a car was used to take. The, um, the money um, across the border. And in fact, they can take your car. Let's say you have a nice, this, this appears to be a Porsche model. So these are items that are very valuable and you need to know that you have rights to get those back. If you contact uh, a competent law office that understands the forfeiture code, the, the, um, the Code of Federal Regulations, the United States Codes, and everything involved in the procedure, you can get your money back when you've got good showing that your money was earned quite legitimately. 
or if you did not know that um, your conveyance was being used for legal purposes. I've got an example for you. For instance, um, I had a client that had a series, a bunch of buses, I should say, a fleet of buses, and uh, there was a gentleman that uh, put 15 kilos underneath somebody else's seat, They're stopped at the border, they clear out the bus, the guy that's got the kilos, of course, beelines it back into Mexico, the driver's left there with the bus that contained the marijuana, and they interviewed him and let him go, and then they have the bus, it's sitting there. Now, if they would have gotten on it right away, the owners of the bus, we can avoid what's called these storage fees and the uh, tow fees and all sorts of different things, or at least a lot of them in, in many cases. So in those kind of cases, it's important to get on it right away. But the owners just didn't understand how the system works in the United States. We would like to make that clear to you. We would like to help you to get your things back. In that particular case, um, our firm did get the bus back and it's now back in the fleet earning money for the company. That's what should be done. And it's the same with the cash that the government has taken from the person's, uh, our person's crossing um, that's in the car uh, that may be used to purchase quite perishable items in the United States to take back to Mexico to be used. Okay? Now we're not talking about tariff laws, we're not talking about what's legal and illegal concerning that, um, those types of items or the number of items. That's not the kind of advice that we're giving you today and as a matter of fact none of this is legal advice but merely an introduction to how the system works and what you should know about it. So give us a call, we'll explain more. I hope this video has helped.